let's take two balloons. And we're going to hang them on strings. And we're going to charge those balloons. And we would see that these two balloons are going to end up repelling one another and are going to be going to orient themselves like this. For those of you who had me last semester, and I think Ms. Valid is the same lab, uh, this is a lab we did last year. So we have two balloons, two charged balloons. And they are going to be two equally charged, so they're going to have equal mass and equal charge. Plus, we're going to know the mass, the length, L, which is just going to be from the very top. And we're going to know, what else are we going to know? And theta, where theta is the angle here. And we're trying to find Q. Moe, step one. Uh, free body diagram. Free body diagram. So give me a free body diagram of the forces acting on the balloon on the left. Haro. Um, you got tension up towards the towards the yeah. And then you got the force you said force one two, I guess, for now. Which direction? Um to the left. For this one, it's going to be the, to the left. I'm going to put F sub E for the electric force. Force one, two would be fine, but the electric force. And, Pato? Force of gravity down. Force of gravity going straight down. OK, we've drawn our free body diagram. What should we do next, Hillary? Uh, break, I'm sorry, say again. Break up the force Into? into its components in the x and y direction. Notice we could do the same thing with the balloon on the right, but it's going to be, they're going to be mirror images of one another, so we don't really need to. We just need to look at one of the two soon. So we have the tension right here. We know this is the tension in the x direction. This is the tension in the y direction. Uh, we know theta here is the same as that theta. I believe they're alternate interior angles. Two parallel lines, am I right? Okay, so we have tension, we can do sine of theta, which equals opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is tension in the y direction divided by the hypotenuse, which is tension. Therefore, tension in the y direction equals tension times the sine of theta. We have cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, or tension in the x direction divided by tension. Therefore, tension in the x direction equals t times the cosine of theta. We've drawn our free body diagram. We've broken things into components, Emily. I don't think the thing was a Did I get it wrong here? Yeah. Shouldn't it be up in the other If this, oh, so if this is theta here, then, yeah, see, I knew I did it wrong. Okay, so if this is theta, then this is theta here. We will fix that. Thank you. You're welcome. Tension. Tension in the y direction, tension in the x direction. No, I'm going to do this. Oh, let's just, ah, uh, jeez. So if this is then theta, that's better. Theta, tension in uh, theta sine, it's going to be tension in the x direction, tension in the x, tension in y, tension in y. Emily, how did I do? Okay. So we now have the, we've drawn our free body diagram, we broke the tension into its components. What do we do now, Zach? What would I suggest first? Uh, redraw, the redraw the free body diagram. So we have the force of gravity, which is straight down. We have the electric force, which is to the left. We have tension in the y direction and tension in the x direction. From here, Nitish, please. Sum the forces in the y. Go ahead. So you have force of gravity going down and tension y going up. So force of gravity is negative, tension y is positive, this equals? Zero, because acceleration is 
zero. So I'm going to put mass times the acceleration in the y direction, which equals zero. Therefore, we get that the tension in the y direction equals the force of gravity, or T times the cosine of theta equals M times G. So we could say that we know tension is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity divided by the cosine of theta. Sarah Jane Jones. We could sum the forces in the other direction. Go ahead. Uh, you got tension in the x direction minus the force. Of, uh, what's it called? I call it the electric force. Electric force equals mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Therefore? It's equal to zero. Good. Therefore, we get that the tension in the x direction equals the force, the electric force. So the tension in the x direction, which was T times the sine of theta, which equals the electric force, which is equal to, in this case, what? Uh, lat T I agree. That's in the But that's the left hand side of the equation. What happens with, what do we get for the electric force? Uh, help him out, Michael. KQ1, Q2 over R squared. True. So we have then tension is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared times the sine of theta. So we have tension equal to two different things. So tension is equal to uh, let's see, K Q1 Q2 over R squared times the sine of theta, which is also equal to mg times the cosine of theta. You should. Okay, so how do we all solve for R? Identify that this is R divided by 2. That's up, right? Yeah. Keep going. So you need this is your theta sine theta sine. Opposite is? R over 2. R over 2 divided by the hypotenuse? L. L. So R is equal to 2L times the sine of theta. Coming back to our equation, we now have. K, Q1, Q2, divided by 2L sine theta squared times the sine of theta equals mg divided by the cosine of theta. Sierra. You said that they have equal charge, so Q1 and Q2, you need to change that to Q squared. Correct. We know Q1 and Q2 are the same, so Q1 equals Q2 equals Q, so we have K times Q squared divided by 4L squared sine cubed theta equals mg divided by the cosine of theta. And if you look, all we have to do now is solve for Q. Q equals, let's see, 4L squared mg sine cubed theta divided by K cosine theta, the square root of. Let's put in some numbers just so we get some idea of how this might work. Uh, if the mass of the objects were, let's say, 3.0 times 10 to the negative second kilograms, and L equals 0 0.15 meters, and theta equals 5.0 degrees, we're going to get Q is equal to 4 times 0 0.15 squared times the mass, 3 times 10 to the negative second, 
times g, which is 9.8, times the sine of 5 degrees, that quantity q, divided by k, which is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth, multiplied by the cosine of our 5 degrees, and that whole thing raised to the 1 half power. q is equal to. <coughs> Other questions? Yeah. Um, do we not ever know if it's positive or negative? So this is a good question. Uh, we'll get the number in just a minute. So what do we know about these charges? Do we know whether they're positive or negative? No. But what do we know about them? They have to be the same. If they were not the same, then they would be pulling toward one another. But you're correct. From the information given, we cannot figure out whether it's a positive or negative charge. So in the end, our answer is going to be a positive or a negative whatever number we get. Good question. What do we get? With sig figs, we'll go with 4.4 .4 times 10 to the negative 8. Times 10 to the negative 8 what, Gary? Ah. Help them out, Tim. What are the dimensions on this? Coulombs. Remember, this is the new, this is the dimensions for coulombs, and again, that is positive or negative. Okay, so that makes the answer 44 what? Coulombs. 44 what? You can give me the what type of coulombs. Nano. Nano. Good, it's, I'm glad we have to review it. Nano coulombs. It is positive or negative 44 nano coulombs. Just to remind you, we have millicoulombs, microcoulombs, nanocoulombs, and picocoulombs. These are going to come up and these are things that you need to know. If you freak out on the AP test, will they be there for you no matter what? Yeah. Yes, remember in the table of information, but remember time is of course very important. So you want to have these memorized. They are of course in order. This is times 10 to the negative 3, times 10 to the negative 6, times 10 to the negative 9, and times 10 to the negative 12. So please keep those in mind.